Today we are talking about conservation of energy. Conservation of energy states that energy cannot be made or destroyed, but importantly it can be transferred from one energy store to another. In this topic you might hear about a closed system. A closed system is simply a machine or number of objects where there is no energy transferred to or from the surroundings. Let's have a look at an example application, the pendulum in a grandfather clock. What are the energy stores of the pendulum in the clock? There is the gravitational potential energy store when the pendulum is at its highest point and there is the kinetic energy store as the pendulum swings down through its lowest point. Now consider the pendulum to be a frictionless closed system. If the pendulum has 100 joules of energy stored in its gravitational potential energy store at its highest point, how much energy is transferred into its kinetic energy store at its lowest point? That's right, 100 joules. Let's look at another example, a bungee jump. Consider the bungee cord used in a bungee jump. If the person has 1000 joules of energy stored in its gravitational potential energy store at the start, what must the total energy of the system be at the end, assuming it is a closed system? So where is this energy stored once the bungee jumper has come to rest at their lowest point? And how much energy is stored there? So according to conservation of energy, if there's 1000 joules of energy at the start, there must be 1000 joules of energy at the end. Of course, as we said, if it's a closed system. At the lowest point, the energy is in the elastic potential energy store of the bungee. And how much energy is there? Well, as we said, 1000 joules of energy. A quick note about closed systems. In real life, systems are not really closed. Energy is lost from the system, typically by heating of the surroundings. This increases the energy stored in the thermal energy store of the surroundings and decreases the energy stored in our system. So if we go back to our example of the bungee, there might not actually be 1000 joules of energy stored in the elastic potential energy store of the bungee. There might only be 999 joules because one joule has been lost to the surroundings and that is why eventually the bungee jumper comes to a rest. So let's see if you can do this by yourself. If a scooter starts off with 10,000 joules of energy stored in its chemical energy store in the petrol and rides over the top of a hill gaining 1000 joules of energy in its gravitational potential energy store, estimate some values of the energy stored in its other energy stores. There's no one right answer here, so let's say it's gained 1000 joules of energy in its gravitational potential energy store. I'm then just going to assume that it's got 8000 joules of energy left in its chemical energy store in its petrol. I'm then just going to say it's got 500 joules of energy stored in its thermal energy store of the engine because the engine is now warm and I'm going to say it's got 500 joules in its kinetic energy store because the scooter is moving. So in total the energy in our system is still 10,000 joules. Can you come up with any of your own examples?